Hebrews chapter 1. Hebrews chapter 1 through 6. Hebrews chapter 1 through, chapter 11, verses 1 through 6. The title message is Dangers of Unbelief. Dangers of Unbelief. Hebrews, book of Hebrews, chapter 11. Uh, we know this chapter as a, in a chapter of faith. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1. The Bible says, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. For by it the elders obtained a good report. Through faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God, so that things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. By faith, Abel offered unto God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain, by which he obtained witness that he was righteous, God testifying of his gifts, and by it he being dead, yet speaketh. By faith, Enoch was translated that he should not see death, and was not found because God had translated him. For before his transition, a translation, he had this testimony that he pleased God. Verse 6. But without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Brother Richard, can you please pray for the message? Dear Heavenly Father, Lord God, we thank you for another day, Lord, of allowing us to come together and to worship you. We thank you for the opportunity to to preach on us, Lord God, what we need to hear, so that way we may grow as a better Christian, serving you, Lord God, being holy as possible and righteous unto you, Lord. For we do serve a living and holy God. Thank you for your resurrection, Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, without it, we wouldn't be going to heaven. Thank you for your precious blood that you shed on the cross at Calvary. Without it, our sins will not be atoned for. And thank you that salvation is by faith alone and not of works. And thank you, Lord, for our free gift of eternal salvation, that we may get to be in heaven with you, to glorify you, Lord. Father, we ask that you please help us to clear each and every one of our hearts and minds, Lord, that we may focus on, on the preaching, Lord, so that way we may, we may better uh, serve you, Lord. And Father, we ask that you please be with anybody that's not here today, Lord God. Please watch over them mm -hmm. and protect them, Lord. Help heal them, Lord God. And help us, Lord, that when we he hear this preaching, that we have more faith unto you, Lord. And not to be distracted by the worldly affairs that, that's taking place right now, Lord. There's a lot of things that will take us away. But help us, Lord, to focus our, our faith unto you, Lord. Lord, you're the author and finisher of our faith. Help us to keep our sight on to you at always, Lord, and never to be deceived or lured away by the, by the things of this world, Lord. And we pray for your soon return. Even so, come, Lord Jesus. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. 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 Dangers of unbelief. We live in this day and age where everything is based upon belief of a person. We see the, all this conflict that's going on in the Middle East and everywhere else is because of the belief that people have. You know, it is a belief that it's my land, it's your land. And many times the history is dictated upon the battle for the land. You know, it's World War II, World War I, and all the wars in between and all the wars that has happened since the creation of UN, which is a joke, still haven't denounced you know, Hamas as a terrorist organization, just like the Harvard University. You know, these are all crooks out there. And they don't appreciate the freedom that our country has. And why? Because they have this belief in what's against democratic society, what's against you know, what's based upon the Bible? What's against, you know, just normal human rights? Because of their unbelief in the word of God many times, 
if not all the times, they're headed to destruction and they're full of destruction. If, you're, if your belief is not based on the word of God, there's no way you're going to have a good end to it. Yes. Look at the fruits of people who's against the word of God. Look at just the folks and the people in the Gaza Strip. I mean, as much as, you know, you might not appreciate and agree with what they believe and whatnot, but there are, you got to have some compassion towards them. They have a two million people who's in a prison because of the terrorist organization oppressing them. Can you imagine? It's 140 square miles. It's very, it's not a lot. And there's a 2.2 plus million people just stuck together. You know, there's an evacuation call. They want them to leave the country. But they can't. If they leave, those terrorists are going to shoot them. So you're, you're, that's a, literally you're putting a you know, rock in a hard place, right? You can't do anything. On top of that, though, because of how they were brought up, the literally God that they should obey and give worship to, they don't. You know? The God that you see in the Word of God the creator of the universe, Lord Jesus Christ. And because they're unbelief, where do you think they're going to go? If they were to die because of all this, you know, war and conflict, they're going to wake up in hell. Yes. Simple as that. I mean, the ugliest truth about the results of unbelief is that you're going to be wake up in hell. Amen. And that is the worst thing that could happen to any soul out there. You could... You know, when we go to, you know, we had a, a good outing yesterday, you know, Korean parade. We we're preaching and passing out thousands of tracts. And I was talking to this gentleman. He's like, you know, I say he doesn't care where he goes after he dies. You know, the Bible says you're going to burn in hell. He goes, yeah, I mean, I don't care, right? And, and I don't even know if the Bible is true, but, I, you know, told him about the possibilities, probabilities, right? <laughs> it still baffles me that people don't believe in the Word of God, or if you don't, even if you don't believe it, you reject and you don't agree with the truth behind it. If you have unbelief in the Word of God, you don't believe in the possibilities in the world. You are that person who don't think anything is possible Except you think that it's all because of you. Very selfish person, right? Yeah. The light turns green because of me, <laughs> right? Yeah. World is sunny because of me. Yeah. It's raining because I want it to rain. You know, I mean, that's a you know, buffoonery, right? That baffles me. Yes. See, your unbelief starts for many people, your unbelief in the word of God. I mean, the point is, you know, first point is that your unbelief will lead you to destruction. Forever destruction or current destruction. You will be destructed. I mean, you'll be destroyed once and for all. So the Word of God, you know, King James Bible, perfect Word of God, Amen. has 800 prophecies. And odds of 800 prophecies coming true is 1 to the 10 to the 895 zeros behind it. And 300 already came to be true. You know, if you've been, you know, coming to our Wednesday, you know, Revelation Bible study, you know, as we tie up the Word of God with the Revelation and from beginning Genesis to Revelation, we see how great and marvelous and wonderful Word of God is. Think about it. So 300 prophecies have been fulfilled already. And 500 will be coming and fulfilled with the second advent of Jesus Christ. The odds of that happening is 1 to the 10 to the 895 zeros. You know what that means? You have to put 1 on top, put a line, put number 10, and you put 895. Or after 10, you put 895 zeros. That would take me probably like 10 minutes to just keep on doing that, right? And that's, no one could ever disprove those prophecies, then how can you have unbelief in it? It's like this. 
you see your birth certificate. It says you were born January 1st, you know, 1880, okay? And it's an official document. And you believe it, you know, because he says it. You believe your birth certificate, you believe, you know, some diplomas out there, you know, yeah. people bring to your employers, you know. I mean, there are a lot of fake ones out there, too. Yeah. But you believe it, right? But, I mean, this is infallible, inerrant word of God, and people don't believe it. It tells you how wicked people are. If someone were to tell me, because, you know, if you ever follow the odds of lottery, they say, right? Like one in like 300 million, and they say that's like impossible to hit, right? This is one in, there's no word for it, one in 10 to the 800, 95 zeros. This is when you use words, you know, like kids like to use, like gazillion, right? Infinity. So... It can't be done unless there's someone who's doing it. And that's Almighty God. And not only just prophecies, we're talking about if you have unbelief today, it's time for you to believe just by the fact of mathematical, scientific fact. Right? You say, ah, I think Einstein was smart. Okay. Maybe he was, but he's not smarter than the Word of God. Right? You say Stephen Hawkins was smart? I mean, he's a fool. He's not smarter than the Word of God. Yeah. Word of God is most scientific. It's perfect. Yes. So if you are logical, you say, I need a proof. Here's the proof. What more proof do people need to believe that Bible is the Word of God? Yes. Bible prophesy about life of Jesus Christ. You know, his origin, his life, his death, everything. 48 prophecies in the Word of God was written between 400 to 2,000 years before he was born. Odds of that happening is 10 to the 157 zeros. Uh, I'm not a scientist, but if you are a scientist who's listening, you might understand there isn't enough electrons in the world to fill that number. I mean, that's, think about it the whole world, or the whole universe. So what, what, what am I telling you? It's impossible for a human being to predict that. Right. Only God can do it. Yes. Then if Bible is true now, hopefully, it's like this. Your head knows that it's true. Because your head is comprehending these numbers. Okay, prophecies are true. No one ever proved it. It's a historical document to many, but it's true. It happened. Then if Bible is true, 100% true, and we know it is true, then there's a place called heaven and hell. And with your unbelief, if you don't believe exactly what the Bible says, then you're going to burn in hell. Because that's what Bible says. Because you are already condemned to death. A lot of people don't understand. I have choice to go to heaven and hell. No. You have choice to go to heaven. You're already condemned to hell. There's no choice about it. If you don't do anything about it, you're going to end up in hell. Simple as that. You know, people are funny when you ask them, you know, if you were to die right now, where do you think you're going to go, right? I don't know. And I I don't know. I'll make my choice after I die. (laughs) No, you don't make choice. You could only make choice to receive Jesus Christ and go to heaven Amen. because the Bible says it. Let's yeah. turn to John, book of John. If anybody has ever been on the fence of believing the word of God, this is it. And faith is believing in things that you can't see. But God has put a place where there's a mathematical, scientific proof that the Bible is the word of God. I mean, what more do you need? Right? I mean, if you need more than that, then you're a fool. I mean, it doesn't even make sense. Let's turn to John chapter 3, verse 36. The Bible says, He that believeth on the Son has everlasting life, and he that believeth not the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abideth on him. Same chapter, 
verse 18. The Bible says, He that believeth on him is not condemned. And we're talking about Jesus Christ. But he that believeth not is condemned already because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. So, dangers of unbelief. First one is your destruction of your soul in hell once and for all. Think about it. Your soul, again, you have body, soul, and spirit. And your soul is eternal being. Your body will turn to dust one of these days, right? But your soul will spend eternity in hell once and for all. You know, Revelation 21 eight says, But the fear of unbelieving, abominable murderers, whoremongers, sorcerers, idolaters, and all liars. And you're a liar. I'm a liar. Yes. We all lie before. Right. If you say I never lie, you're the biggest liar. <laughs> Can you? Uh, sometimes it's funny. You go knock on the door. You know, Bible says in Romans chapter 3, verse 10, you know. There's, uh, there's none righteous, no, not one. For all have sinned and come short of glory of God, verse 23. So the Bible says you're a sinner. Uh, and then you ask a question, have you ever lied before? And I know. Uh, I mean, I don't even know how you could say I never lied. I know. You, you just lied to me right now. You lied to your parents as you're growing up. You lied to your family as you're growing up. You know, you're lying to somebody right now, maybe. So you're a liar. The Bible says in Revelation 21a, as a liar, you're going to burn in hell forever. Yes. And those are the people who's already condemned. That's why this unbelief business out there, it's not about you choosing to go to hell once again. You're already condemned to burn in hell. It's your choice to go to heaven. It's just that many people don't choose that choice. You don't choose to go to heaven. And how foolish can it be? I mean, I'll say it. You know, if I know that if I could touch that piano and I become 100% healthy, I, don't, I'll, I won't have any issues in my life, and it's been proven, then I'll just go and touch it. Because I know it's good for me. Right? Who in this room or you know, listening, wouldn't do that. Everybody wants to have a healthy body, right? Yes. Yeah, and especially if you're aching, especially if you're going through any type of body ailments, you know, illnesses, you definitely want to have a solution to it. Not getting surgeries, right? Not eating pills every day, you know, being drowsy, being hurt. No. If you could do something in an instant and you could be whole, made whole, without any issues and pain and suffering, then you're going to do it. Yes. And if there's a proof, then you're going to do it. That's why there are a lot of you know, con artists out there. Okay, drink this potion, right? Then you're going to be whole. You know, if you have you know, migraine issues in your life, you drink this, no more migraines, right? If your joints are hurting, right, drink this. You know, you're going you're gonna to be running now. You haven't run for, ran for the last 10 years, but you're going to be able to run, right? You're going to be like an Olympic sprint guy, right? And then you, you believe it and do it. And then people lose a lot of money because of that. Yes. But when it comes to the Word of God, which I already proved to you is the Word of God by the probabilities out there. And it says, you know, Jesus Christ is the Savior. You trust Him. You go to heaven. Why wouldn't you accept that? Yeah. Right? I mean, it's like, it's, it's the worst decision you could ever make in your life. If there is a one to the billion and gazillion chance that you're going to burn in hell, you shouldn't take that chance. Because hell's forever. You can't get out of hell. No. I mean, you could be burning there. I mean, think about the rich man at Lazarus. He's still burning and burning and burning. It's been thousands of years, and he's still burning. You're going to be burning there. Our weather's been kind of hot again. Maybe Indian summer came a little late. It's hot. But think about your whole body is burned, being burned forever and ever, hotter than the sun. Yes. And you're just burning and burning and burning. Can you imagine? You put your hand on top of your stove whether it's gas or electric, put it on it. 
you can't stay there for even a few seconds. No. But imagine someone's forcing you to put it there as a torture for even 24 hours. What do you think is going to happen to your hand? <laughs> On top of that, your nerves will be damaged. Amen. And you'll be suffering, not just your hand area, your whole body with the nerve issues. But can you imagine? Your, it's not just your hand that's going to burn for 24 hours, 100 hours, 1,000 hours, 10,000 hours, million hours. Your whole body will be burning in fire and brimstone for million years, 10 million years, forever years. And you're going to take that chance of burning in that lake of fire? You're going to burn in hell forever? If it doesn't register to you, let it register to you. Yes. Because you got to wake up one day. Amen. And right now should be the day that you wake up. Yes, because today. if you were to reject, and if God, who has shown you without any doubt, mercy and grace for you to get saved, and you reject it just like Pharaoh did, you know what? Your heart's going to be hardened. You've already said no to God. And you might die today. And you have zero excuse. It doesn't matter. Johnny over there heard it 100 times. It doesn't matter you heard it once or twice. You had your chance. And God is fair God. Don't worry about Johnny. He'll be deep, burning in deeper hell. Right? Yes. And there is a level of hell. I mean, there's levels in hell, okay? So don't worry about it. But you'll be burning together with, you know, this is one of the worst characters out there. However, even if you're the worst of the worst characters, if you have belief on the Lord Jesus Christ, you go to heaven. Amen. Yeah. Jesus Christ did not die for okay sinners. <laughs> but you can't be that naive. You know, I didn't kill nobody. I didn't rob nobody. You know, I didn't hurt nobody. I mean, that's like the first answer people give to you. Yes. I've been nice to people. I try to live a good life, right? But in your heart, you kill a lot of people. Yes. I mean, wait, especially over here in Southern California, as you're driving, <laughs> man, I'm sure in your heart, you kill a lot of people. Yeah. Man, only if I had a pistol, right? And only if I could, like, blow up the tire, right? Yeah. You know, especially if they made you almost get into a big accident. Like, in, like on freeways, we're going, what, like over 65? Some of you going a lot faster than that one, right? Yeah. <laughs> and then someone without the signal light, not paying attention, just swerves into you. Sometimes you're that person. Sometimes I could be that person, right? And then you're going like that? I mean, God bless you if you're still calm and like, oh, you know, it's okay. But a lot of people will be getting angry. And they want to get back at them, right? But don't think that, you know, when you have that kind of hatred, heart, murderous thoughts, it's not sin. There's sin too. Yes. I mean, just like you see, I mean, if you lusted after a woman, you've committed adultery already. Yes. I mean, that's how it's going to be, like in the millennium, right? If you ever see the Sermon on the Mount in Matthew 5 through 7. So, you and I, it's not just outward actions and doings that are sin. Anything that's inside, that is a sin too. Yes. Children, how many times have you cussed at your parents? Or cursed at your parents when you're growing up? Because they were punishing you for the right reasons, Right? Sometimes for the wrong reasons, but many times, majority of the time, for the right reason. And then you get so angry, you know. Yeah, I'm pretty sure you're respectful. You're not going to name your dad or mom by their name, right? Maybe some kids do, right? But you just say, mom, dad, you know, I'm going to get you, you know, when I'm get, I get stronger than you. Like you have those bad thoughts. Yes. You might even say bad words to them, right? Yes. And during the Old Testament, you should be stoned to death. That's right. Like that. Amen. I mean, that's, that's, that's how wicked your sins are. So going back to the point, don't think that you're not that bad. 
Don't think that you're not the serial killers out there. You're sane. Amen. In the sight of God, everybody's a sinner. Amen. Why does Bible say for all have sinned? When it says all, that includes everybody. Yeah. That includes Pharisees during those days, right? That includes, you know, Pope, right, right now. That yes. includes Biden, right? Yes. That includes me. That includes Newsom. That includes yes. all the politicians Amen. out there, Amen. right? We are all sinners Amen. in the sight of God. It's just that there's two choices. Are you a saved sinner? Or are you an unsafe sinner? Amen. That's it. Yes. You could be whatever religion you want to be. I mean, at the end of the day, I mean, you don't have to even call yourself, you know, Baptist, independent Baptist, right? I mean, you could be whatever you want to be, honestly. Yeah. You could call yourself Jehovah's Witness. You could call yourself Mormon. You could call yourself, you know, Seventh-day Adventist, you know, Presbyterian, you know, Southern Baptist. You could call yourself even Muslim, Islam, you know, Buddhist, you know, Zen Buddhist, everything. But if you believe, on, I mean, if you believe in Lord Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, according to the Word of God, then you're saved. Simple. Then you're a saved Catholic. You're a saved charismatic. You're saved Jehovah's Witness. You're saved Mormon. You're saved Islam, Muslim, Hindu, everything. You yes. just want to be that saved person. That's it. Yes. Obviously, you won't have much reward in heaven or, you know, your, your relationship. But number one thing is that you have to get rid of that unbelief. Yes. That will lead to your destruction of your soul in hell forever. That's why we go out to streets. That's why we go door to door. That's why we witness to people. Is it because, you know, we just want to grow our following in social media? Is it because we want to become popular? Do you think it's popular to tell people that, hey, if you don't trust Jesus Christ, you're going to burn in hell? People don't want to hear the word hell, right? But we tell them. Why? Because we love their soul. At the end of the day, why do we do it? Because we love their soul. At the end of the day, why did Jesus Christ die for you? And Bible, again, I just proved to you the Bible is perfect and it's word of God. Unless you could prove it otherwise, who no one has been able to do it past thousands of years, and you're not smarter than people, all their you know, brains combined. AI can't prove it either, okay? I mean AI, J I, P I, they'll never be able to prove that Bible is not the word of God. Because no AI in the world is better than one to the ten to the eight hundred and ninety-five possibilities. Can you imagine? Hey, give me a possibility, 1 to the 10 to the 895, you explode your computer. That's right. It will run until you people die. I mean, that's how long it's going to take. Then you have to resolve it right away if you haven't done so. I mean, the Bible says now is the day of salvation. Is it now? It's not tomorrow. It's not day after. Because the Bible says what? Life is like a vapor that appears for a little time and then vanishes away. You know, funny thing about life is that you and I could be talking right now and one of us could be at someone else's funeral next week. Right. Sure. Yeah. Think about what happened at the you know, attack, terrorist attack last week or you know, la- like yes. Saturday before last week. They were enjoying themselves in the desert in a concert. They didn't think they were going to die. There are like a lot of a bunch of young people. They see the IDF, you know, Iron Dome, you know, blasting away, stopping those rocket missiles to coming. They're like, oh, yeah, we see it all the time. Yeah. But suddenly you see this, you know, paragliding people coming. Oh, yeah, it's an event, right? Wow, they're going to probably do some, you know, fireworks or something. But before you know it, I mean, you hear gun sounds everywhere. Then you, imagine if you're at that place because you like those type of stuff and you didn't get saved, but you knew Jesus Christ. Almost the whole world knows about Jesus Christ. Yes. But you rejected him maybe once, twice, many times. And those terrorists put you in a car. That's what they did to a lot of young people. As they were trying to run away from them, you know, first car gets attacked by the terrorists, and the rest of the cars, you're stuck. Where are you going to go, right? I mean, you could try, but a lot of them got stuck. So what they did was they burned people alive. You know, you were in the car, and then they just, you know, put a little fire on you. And guess what? You think they were sad? No, they were happy. 
they were smiling. And then you, you know, people out there like, oh yeah, you know, I'm for Hamas and stuff, you're crazy. Yeah. Just as a human being, right? You know, if someone's out there to kill you and your family and your baby elderly and everybody and they do wrong to the woman and stuff and then they kill you and burn you and butcher you and behead you and you're like, oh, I still, I'm still for them. You're, you're the person I'll never want to associate with. I mean, simple as that, just as a human being, right? But besides from that, can you imagine if you are caught in that firestorm, you die burning in the car, in the fire, and then you wake up and you're still burning in hell. And that's what unbelief will do to you. Why would you even want to take chance? And one guy was hiding under a grove for like five, six hours with his friend. You know, or a lot of witnesses say, you know what? You know, I had a wrong idea about Palestine and you know, Hamas and stuff. You know, you know, they're animals, you know. We don't see them as human. But beside from the point, I mean, you letting your soul burn in hell forever, you know, that is the biggest tra tragedy that you ever have in your life. Yes. Then, if you are saved people, why are you letting any of your loved ones head it that way? Yes. If you haven't done your best, I'm telling you, Human heart is very wicked, and it, it is hard for some people to get saved. But the Bible says God is not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. God wants everyone to get saved. So you can't tell God, God, it's so hard. You don't want my mom to get saved, huh, Lord? Because I tried to witness to her thousands of times, but she said no thousands of times. But Bible says he wants her to get saved. Then you should do more. As long as you're breathing, as long as you could see the light, as long as you could talk, as long as you could write, because, you know, people are advanced nowadays. You could just text them, email them consistently, constantly bother them, right? You don't even have to hear their voice. They don't have to hear your voice, right? If you don't do it, then as the perfect Word of God says they're going to burn in hell because of their unbelief. And if you haven't done your part, just like Book of Ezekiel said, you know, their blood will be required on your hands. But more than that, when you are at the white throne judgment, you're going to actually see them sent down straight to hell. Yes. Can you? I can. I mean, I can't handle it. Even thinking about it, I can't handle it. When someone looks at you right between the eyes and pointing at you, you know. I mean, it's ultimately their fault, but they're going to tell you, because of you, I'm going straight down to burn there forever. That's why God has to wipe away all the tears. I don't think tears going to stop until he has to wipe it away from all of our eyes. Because just seeing them, you know, sent down to eternal lake of fire, burning in hell forever, Whoever they were, I'm telling you, even if it was your worst enemy, nobody deserves hell. Amen. I mean, nobody. I mean, nobody. I mean, hell's made for devil and his angels. And don't worry about people getting their dues, right? You know, God has his law. You reap what you sow. So don't be jealous. You know, don't be so bitter. Don't do any of that. God's going to take care of it. Whatever it is, right? Well, I mean... Don't think that, you know, all this, I don't even know if it's a lighter story. Don't think that all these people who's getting away, all the stealing, all these merchandises at, you know, Target, CVS, you know, Walmart everywhere. No, don't think that they're going to get away. God knows, right? Normal people are like, oh, you know, there's so much injustice. Yes, there's injustice, but in God's justice system, there's no such thing as injustice. Yeah. Everything is fair, and people are going to be judged according to what they've done with Lord Jesus Christ. Yes. And as Christians, what you've done after you accepted Jesus Christ. Yes. Because we have our own judgment, which is the judgment seat of Christ. If you have, one of the dangers of unbelief is that people waste a lot of time. A lot of time. Because of your unbelief. All right? 
I'm like, ah, can Lord really do this for me? And instead of going about your life, having faith in the Lord as a saved Christian, with doubts and everything, you just waste a bunch of your time thinking about unbelief. How many hours, how many days, how many years have you wasted in your brain all those hours just thinking about all the possibilities that's going to go wrong in your life, right? Instead of just having faith in God. God said, you know what? I'm going to provide all your need, for example. You do your best, God's going to provide it. Whatever it is, you know, essentials. But you don't trust God. You know, even though I'm his child, I can't trust him enough. You know, my bank account is going low. You know, my life is a mess. And you know, I don't say it lightly because, you know, my wife's going through it and a lot of our church members are going through it, like your health issues, right? Like, God, uh, you know, I can't trust you now with my health. It's just so much pain and stuff. What is that going to do to you? What good is it? Unless you trust in the Lord. Amen. Man, Lord could fix it just like that. Mm-hmm. We've seen many cases, not because of some charismatic punching the person's head, right? <laughs> no, because, you know, because Lord does miraculous works through prayer. Yes. You know, stage four cancer disappears, right? Amen. I mean, sometimes, like, you know, bad heart becomes good heart. Right. Just like that. Yes. It's up to the Lord. But the Bible says in Romans 8, 28, right? For any person who's saved and any person who had any doubts in your life, if you have any unbelief, you think that your body is being destroyed, you know, for no good reason. The Bible says, and we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are called according to his purpose. Amen. All things, yes. whether it's good or bad, whether good or bad, good health, bad health, right? Rich, poor, everything in between, yes. it's going to work out for good. You reap what you sow, according to Galatians chapter 6, right? right? Then it's good for you. As much as I hate it, it's good for me. Because according to Romans 8, 28 and Galatians chapter 6, if you go to like verse 7 and 8, it leads the world together. That's the belief that you have to have. When you don't have that kind of belief in the word of God, and what God said he's going to do in his promises, then what happens? You waste time, and that's when you commit a lot of sin, needless sin. Right? You start compromising with the world, with the devil, and the flesh. You know, your faith and unbelief and belief gets challenged during your toughest times. That's why there's trials. That's why God has to test you. God has to test your faith, believing in him whom you can't see at every situation. There's a lot of great, you know, men of God who demonstrate their faith, right? There's like Harold and Popoff during the World War, you know, being tortured by, tortured by the Nazis, right? And Many, many Fox's Book of Martyrs being tortured by, you know, those Catholic, everybody, those institutions. They kept their faith. Amen. Us, we're not going through it right now, and we can't even keep our faith. Like, oh, Lord, it's too hot. I'm not going to get into my car and do your work. I told you, Lord. 75 and above, I stay home. You know? I mean, that's how lazy, you know, wicked Christians has become. Yes. They don't want to do anything for God. And they think if you get food that doesn't taste good, it's persecution. <laughs> it doesn't taste the same, Lord. And that's, that's a, too much pressure on me. And too much, you know, persecution to my stomach. I mean, think about those people who are, who's in communist countries right now. They have no food. I mean, they don't, they're, they're literally dying, you know, under 70, 60 pounds. Because they don't get any food. 
In the meanwhile, we're here just complaining about our food, about our clothes, about our cars, home, and everything else. Man, that's a shameful Christian. Yes. That's not displaying faith in the Lord. That's why when even little test comes your way, you're full of doubt, disobedience. That's it. Because trust in the Lord with all of your heart, right? You have to acknowledge Him in all your ways. But as a Christian, do you acknowledge Him in all your ways? Do you trust Him in all your ways? These are simple questions. These are questions that you already know. And these are questions where you know the answers to already. But what is the preaching about? It has to make it practical. It has to make your behaviors change. If you've been a lazy Christian, if you've been unfaithful Christian, now you have to get rid of those unbelief. Amen. And then you have to truly believe what the Lord says. Then, at the end of the day, how is it going to show? By your actions. Yes. Your faith will be shown by your actions. Yeah, it's, it's just natural. You'll come out of yourself, literally. If you trusted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, one day you're going to be confessing Him. Yes. I mean, if you believe everything that the Bible says, and then if you want to do what the Bible says, even through all the sufferings and trials and hardships in your life, it's going to show through your conversation, not just your words only, but by your actions as well. Think about it. Mark 8, 36 says, For what shall it profit a man if he shall gain the whole world but lose his own soul? Right? You could gain the whole world. If you don't trust Christ, you're going to burn in hell. You lose your soul. You could gain the whole world as a Christian, but you have no rewards in heaven, and you have no fellowship with the Lord. What's most important to you? With unbelief comes no fellowship with the Lord. With the belief, fellowship comes both ways. As a saved person, you know, you're going to have the relation with the Lord. Unsaved person who trusts Christ, you'll be in the family of God once and for all. As we look back at our Christian walk right now, think about all the situations and instances you know, where your unbelief took over. When you should have been trusting the Lord instead of making that hasty you know, carnal, fleshly, worldly decision, right? That's where perseverance and patience comes in. Lord wants to teach you. Lord wants to teach me every day. Wait on me. Wait on me. I said it, right? I'm going to say, I'm going to do it. You know what's most annoying to parents? You tell your kids, I'm going to do it for you, right? And you mean it. But they question you. Are you going to do it? Are you going to do it? You say you're going to do it. And I, hey, did that day come? I said I'll do it by the end of the month, right? And this is only the third of the month. Asking every single day. Then your parents get annoyed, right? Does this kid not trust me? And you lose blessings. If, you, if your unbelief is part of your life as a Christian, you're going to lose a lot of blessings. And there's going to be delays in your blessings. Don't be complaining to God. God, that person, that person, you know, you bless them in many, many ways. What about me? Uh, you look at your heart. Oh, you know, you're full of unbelief, son. Oh, yeah, I, have, I didn't believe you would do it, you know. Then that's the answer. Don't let unbelief get in the way of God's blessing, right? Don't let unbelief get in the way of right fellowship with the Lord. And especially don't let unbelief get in the way of you going to heaven if you're not saved yet. We have to keep great testimony. We have to be light to this lost world out there. Without the right belief, without the right faith, without this unchanging, steadfast love and stand we have for the word of God, we will always demonstrate unbelief. And that is one avenue where people, the enemy will poke it to say, see, bring bad name to the Lord. See, I don't want to get saved because of you. You don't even believe it. You don't even show it. You don't want to be that Christian. As we always say, we want to be found faithful. 
We want to hear, well done, thou good and faithful servant from the Lord. Only way that's going to happen when we avoid the dangers of unbelief. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, too many days go by where we don't check our faith. We just become nonchalant. Lord God, we become lazy. Help us to just understand that our faith needs to grow on a daily basis. It's not something just needs to be stayed at one place. It needs to grow. Only way it's going to grow is, you know, having fellowship with you, right fellowship, reading the Word of God, praying, and doing the things that you, we need to do, Lord. I pray that if anyone who's listening, or if they don't know where they're going, Lord God, I pray that today will be their salvation, Lord. Because now is the day of salvation, Lord. We don't want any soul to burn in hell, Lord. And I pray that you'll bless the rest of the services and rest of the day. And above all, Lord, even so come, Lord Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.